for your calibration practice we were talking about, you're using the finger system, you're, using the, you're putting tees on the ground to see where your strike is, foot spray, other things like that, and also charting what's happening so we can kind of be a little bit more deliberate about what's happening. What's exactly. next after calibration? So, uh, well, I'll, I'll hit one more shot. Oh, sure. I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm actually, because I'm such a good golfer, I never hit real bad shots, mm -hmm. but I'm going to do one intentionally. Oh, gosh, <laughs> man. I'm going to do an intentional bad shot yeah, just so humorous, we can see what the fault is. Humorous, please. <laughs> Okay, so that felt horrible. Now, directionally, it was good. It was within the two fingers. So I don't have to mark anything th down for face direction. However, what changed there? Well, it was the strike. Wow, yeah. We, now, we can see on you were 32 millimeters exactly, towards the yeah. toe. Now, lots of amateurs will hit a shot like that, and they go immediately to their swing. What happened in my swing? Yeah. Well, you might not find the answer to it there. And it was also seven millimeters high on the face. Which is another way of saying fat. Exactly, okay. yeah. It's a, it's a good signifier of a, of a fat contact, yeah, because it's very hard to hit high on the face without contacting the ground early. Yeah. So yeah, so in my, on my little chart there, I would, I would put a, a notch on ground contact. F. And uh, yeah, F for fat. and yeah. Uh, face contact toe. And then what you're doing, once you, once you start to hit a bunch of shots, you'll start to see patterns there. Sure. You know, because everybody says I'm inconsistent as a golfer, but that's not true. Like most players, uh, they this are is, this consistent. This is a uh, can of worms <laughs> to get into. Well, yeah. That, that I think we should talk about, uh, uh, but maybe we'll do an entire video on consistency mm -hmm. so, um, because it's such a complicated and interesting topic. All right, so, so beyond calibration, then what are the other things like that you'll uh, practice? The fourth type of practice would be performance training. So this is great if you're getting into tournaments and you're preparing to peak. So this is where we don't want to increase learning necessarily. Like, so learning, hitting toe and heel and things like that, you're opening up a bit of Pandora's box, yeah. but you are going to learn more. Performance is more about stabilizing and seeing what's working right now. So is this like playing games or Almost. Like keeping that's score? that's going to be the next stage. Oh, okay. So performance is kind of an intermediate step between that. So what I might do is hit 10 shots trying to fade it. Sure. And then I'd hit another 10 shots trying to draw it. And then I might hit another 10, trying to hit, hit as straight as I can, no shape on it at all. And then what I would do is look at the data and I would say, which one of those is the tightest? Which one of those has the best spread? And sometimes it's not my favorite one. Like yeah. sometimes, like I prefer hitting a draw. Right. But sometimes I'll be testing it and I go, well, it's tighter with a fade this sure. week. And so that's what I would use that week. Because if you're performing better with that, then that's what you want to go with. Something I saw Luke Donald do that I thought was really cool is he makes these little stacks of five balls, just like you have here, yeah. you know, and he separates them out before he practices. Uh, to deliberately keep him from just like raking and hitting and he'll say like our like a pot of five 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 and then he's got things that he does with his wedges for each five each little set of five balls similar to, to what you're saying so I think uh, kind of separating your balls from the tray or maybe keep the basket and then just take five balls out put them in the tray that way to, to kind of get yourself a little bit more deliberate like hey like this is what I'm trying to do on these five shots because a lot of times you can hit a certain shot and get distracted and be like, be like, uh, oh wow, that, that hooked, let me try to fade it. But no, no, you were trying to hook it, so let's just stick with it. Yeah, I mean, you can even test different types of focuses. Okay. So say for example, I mean, where this, where this whole phase was born was I sometimes have a player come to me and they say, oh, I hit it better when I swing slow. Mm -hmm. And I would say, okay, well, let's test it then. Hit 10 balls for hitting as hard as you can now hit 10 balls swinging what you consider slow and then sometimes they would be right sometimes they would they would hit it farther and straighter when they swing it smooth right. and other times i'd be right and when they're trying to hit it harder they would they would gain stroke so you can actually put it in terms of stroke perception and reality well. can be exactly yeah i mean we know from strokes gained that if you hit 20 yards farther you gain what 0.2 of a stroke as an amateur for every 20 yards and that allows you you know over over 14 shots that's 2.8 strokes around yeah. and you lose what 0.3 of a stroke every time you miss the rough so you can work this out mathematically and say okay well you hit it 20 yards farther okay you hit one more stray ball but mathematically you're better off swinging harder Okay. Um, or, you know, sometimes I'd have someone say, well, I'm working on what you're telling me to work on, Adam, but I feel better when I, when I focus on this. Yeah. And so I would have to take my, my own ego as a coach out of it and say, well, let's, let's test them. 
you know, work on what I'm working, hit 10 balls for me. Now hit 10 balls focusing on what you, you think is correct. And if they, if, if they produced better outcomes with what they were working on, I would have to say, okay, you've got to play the tournament with that at the moment. It might not be the best long-term strategy, but... Yeah, I think too, uh, maybe sometimes too much. Golf, you know, it's, it's a, golf instruction is like a service industry. You know, it's, it's something that people don't need, but they want it. Um, so if somebody says, oh, I hate hitting this, this fade, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if you have them, so, so a, a lot of teachers would say, okay, well, let me teach you how to hit the draw. But, it, but if people stick to metrics and just be like, okay, well, just to let you know, you know, the metrics are you're much more accurate hitting the fade for now. We can have a long-term project of getting you to hit a draw maybe, but, but just to let you know, like, you know, to, for your round this weekend, you know, beyond your ego, you're going to do better. Yeah, you okay. separate the goals out as well, depending on whether you're long-term or short-term. Yes, long-term, for example, you might hit that, or that slicer might hit that draw much, much farther. But he's all over the place with it because it's new, right? It's, they, they haven't practiced it enough. Whereas their old fade is very trusty for them. And that, that again, you would say, okay, well, in our training, we might spend more time in the winter working on that draw when the results don't matter. But you've got a big tournament next week. We've got to go with that trusty fade. Yeah. And so that's where the performance training will show which one is, is better at that time. So that's performance. Uh, recap for me th these five things. <laughs> so I, we've done four so far. There's technical training, which is working on your movement. Sure. Experimental training, which ex is exploring toe, heel, left, right, yeah. fat, thin, hitting different parts of the ground. Calibration training is zoning in on the middle of that, sure. trying to hit the center of the face, trying to hit your target, trying to hit the spot on the ground, sure. and just noting down which one's the weakest. Uh, and then performance training is testing to see what, either what shot shape, what swing focus mm -hmm. gives you the best outcomes. Yeah. yeah. And, finally. and the fifth is transference training. So this is game-like training. It's the thing that you okay. mentioned. So this is simulating the game itself. So, I mean, a great example of this would be something like a TrackMan Combine, or you can set up a test on GC Quad where you have different targets, uh, something people can but do. But if people are on a range without high tech? At home, what you can do is set up two targets, like pick two range targets on uh, side by side, so you've got that little area to hit it down, and then try to make sure it's what you're doing is as realistic to the real game as possible. So switch clubs a lot. Step outside, do a full routine as well. So you might get a wedge, do a full routine, walk in, hit your shot. Then you step outside, you get your driver, you do a, a full routine, hit your shot. So practice swings and all. So you're really, you're training your brain to... And does to there need to be routine. some kind of, in this final part of training, does there need to be some kind of scoring component to make it the best? The more you can add, we call it contextual interference. Okay. Is That's the scientific term for it. The more you can add of that, the better it will make the, the training. The more engaged you'll be. And exactly. So if you can add a, a game in terms of, you know, doing that driver, then wedge, then seven iron, if at any point you fail, you have to go back and start again. Or maybe you're keeping track of how many in a row you can successfully do. So there's that internal pressure. So if you get up to 12 in a row, and this is your record, you're gonna to start to feel a little bit of nerves. Things are gonna to start to change. If you can add a practice buddy as well. So yeah. practice with a partner, that's another thing that, we call it contextual interference because it adds context, it makes it more realistic, but it also interferes with the performance. It makes it more difficult. Sure. When you're practicing with a buddy there, and if you put money on the line as well, there's more interference, more things ha start happening in your brain that you can't just get when you're practicing on your own. And then you're really sharpening, sharpening your golf course knife. Exactly, uh, yeah. yeah. And you know, it depends what people need as well. With these five training stages, I would say obviously if you're training for a tournament, you need to do more of the performance training and then the transference game-like training. Yeah. Um, whereas if you're training to improve and reach yeah. new heights, yeah. you might need to do more of the technical and the experimental work. Yeah. And then calibration is something in between those. So you can phase those things throughout the season differently as well. Winter work is going to be more technical, experimental. In-season work is going to be more performance, transference, and calibration. Awesome. I think that gives you guys a lot of good uh, things to think about. I think for Be Better Golfers that want to you know, break this pl plateau and get better, I think the real thing I just don't see people doing very much is, is exploring in, in, the, um, 
and the n n not the calibration one, but the one where they're actually differential practice. Differential practice. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, being more experimental with it. So be open-minded with that. If you guys want to see more videos with Adam, be sure to click the subscribe button. It really helps the channel here on Be Better Golf. And you can find out more about Adam on his website. Adam has written a, a great book sitting right over there. I'm looking at it called The Practice Manual. So if you really want to get an in-depth version of how to practice to get better, especially if you're very serious about uh, breaking this plateau, check out The Practice Manual and the other things he has going on at Adam Young. Adam Young. AdamYoungGolf.com. AdamYoungGolf.com. Thank you. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody.